Hey everyone, DQDC here with some more core shader shenanigans. This time I'm showing off my new resource pack, the Vanilla Entity Shader Effects resource pack. This is a resource pack that when combined with specially designed textures can add animated and shader effects to player skins and entity textures. In this episode I'll be going over a showcase of skins and textures that have animated effects, then going in-depth in all the different available animation effects, as well as showing how you can create your own textures that are compatible with this resource pack. This first texture is my own player skin that I've updated to have glowing lights, blinking lights on the chest, as well as this matrix screen effect on the screen on my face and on the back of the skin. This next skin was submitted by a longtime subscriber and Discord member Gollum64. It adds a glint effect to the dagger on the back of the skin, as well as blinking and glowing eyes on the face. This next skin is from another longtime subscriber, Twadge. It adds a pulsing glowing effect to the warden antenna, as well as a color shifting effect to the bands around the arms. This next skin was provided by 3D modeler extraordinaire Igor Mechanic. I've updated it to have a glowing light on the wrist and animated gears on the back. This next skin was submitted by Zero, and I've updated it to have a pulsing region on the arm, as well as an animated chase effect through the maze on the leg. This Enderman shows off using the End Portal shader as part of the texture. I've bundled a resource pack that adds this effect to Endermen, Endermites, the Ender Dragon's wings, and End Crystals. Finally, this Lava Cow texture from a data pack that I am currently working on showcases using a flowing fluid effect in parts of the texture. Now that you've seen a bit of what can be accomplished with this resource pack, I'm going to showcase the individual programs that can be applied to each pixel. Uh, the way the programs work is each pixel can be flagged to have a single program applied to it, and that program controls how it's animated, and it can also include two colors. Uh, those colors can either be the base texture that's already on that pixel, or a second color that you tell it to have. And additionally, the color, um, either color, can be marked as being emissive or glowing in the dark. Uh, so with that, the first program is a constant effect. It can make the pixel that's on the texture emissive, um, or it can override a pixel with another color so that people with the pack enabled see something different than people without the pack enabled. And just to show the glowing effect, I can turn the lights off and back on. The next program is an impulse program. In a sequence of up to 16 pixels, you can have one of those pixels at a time, the secondary color, while the other pixels are the primary color. Um, and so you can see here just this effect of a single pixel falling down the line. You can see different timings, different delays, and then using it here on actual face textures to accomplish a blinking effect. The next one is a square wave. This is very similar, except it always has 8 of the 16 pixels in the sequence turned on at any given time. Uh, this can be used for very simple two-frame animations, or a shifty eye effect, or my favorite over here with Alex. I don't know, I just love that effect. Um, and you can see here if I turn the lights off, you can also have it where you know the only difference is the pixel becomes emissive, um, but still following that same square wave pattern. The next pattern is a sine wave. 
This is a more gradual shift between the two colors in the program. You can see here, just very gradual sine waves. I have it adding a small wave effect to Alex's hair over here. We're using it to smoothly shift between two completely different textures over here. And again, you can have emissive and non-emissive effects mixed together. This next program is a sawtooth wave. It starts on whatever the color one is, jumps immediately to color two, and then slowly fades back to color one. Uh, this can be used for pulsing effects, like here on a little map marker, or you know various other types of movement effects. The next one is very similar. It's a heartbeat wave. It's very similar to the sawtooth, but after fading a little bit, it jumps all the way back up to the secondary color. So you can see here, it's more of a heartbeat effect than just a single pulse and fade. The next effect is a hue shift effect. So this takes whatever the starting color is and slowly cycles through different hues while maintaining the same saturation and brightness. Um, if your base texture has a slight hue gradient on it already, it also has a bit of a movement effect with how that hue changes over time. This next one is a falling fluid or noise effect. You can use it to imitate lava or water, as well as um, you can set the pixels to be slightly smaller for that matrix effect. You can combine it where it uses the base texture as the first color and water as a secondary color to have a crying effect added to player skins. And like all the other textures, you can have it where you have an emissive texture in a region, um, but keeping the color the same as the base texture. And this final program is the end portal effect. You can see here is like an end portal and an end gateway, um, but you can also change the colors of the effect, change the density to be much more dense. You can change the movement speed. Uh, so here I have a creeper face that's very similar to the unscreenshotable effect because the noise is moving at slightly different speeds. And like all the other textures, you can also have purely emissive regions that keep the same texture color. And if I remembered correctly, that was the last effect. Uh, so next I will show you how you can add these animated effects to your own textures or player skins. The easiest way to update a texture to be compatible with Vs is to use this web app I've put together. You start by just dragging and dropping the texture you want to edit onto the screen and selecting what texture type it is. For most entities, this will automatically be limited to a single option, so you don't have to worry. But with some entities where the textures are the same size, but where the entity like texture information is, is different, you'll have to select the correct one from the menu. And then click Start Animating. This pulls up our texture editor. We have a few regions. We have in the middle our main texture. In the top left corner, you can see that a little data tag has been added. This tells the shader that this is an animated texture and gives it information about where on the texture sheet all of the animation metadata is contained. On the left, we have our program color palette. You can click a pixel here to edit it and add a color. This color can then be accessed by the programs later on and shows up in the pick texture over here. I have a couple pre-selected colors that I'm going to use for the eyes when the eyes are closed. So I will just set those now. And then to edit a program, you can come over to the program palette. You can just single click a program to select it. And when you've selected it, you can paint pixels in the texture to have it, or you can double click to edit. 
For this first program, we're going to be doing the blinking eye effect. So we're going to select the impulse wave. This is the one that will have a single pixel in the sequence of 16 on color B, while the other 15 are on color A. We're going to select the fast speed for this one, so the blink is very short when it happens. For color A, we're going to leave it as this top left selection. That tells it to use whatever color is already on the texture at that position. And then for color B, we're going to select this first color here. We're going to add a pause of 2. This just means in the cycle of going through all 16 pixels and turning them on one at a time, we then pause for the time it would take to go through that cycle two more times before turning anything on. Uh, this can be useful for making different things out of sync, uh, like the blinking lights on my player skin's chest. Um, and we're going to mark both of these textures as glowing. And that's it for this texture. I'm going to copy this value here. We're going to create our second program by just pasting the original program and selecting that second color for color B. And we'll place the top half of the eyes with that color. And for our third and final program, we're just going to do a constant program. The speed doesn't matter for constant ones. I'm going to leave color A as this top left and set it to be glowing. And so this texture, or this program, when applied to any pixel, will keep the base color, but add a glowing effect. And now I just need to, you know, mouse over every single pixel in the texture. This is something I'll hopefully optimize sometime down the road. Alrighty, that is every pixel updated to be glowing. Um, you can't see it with the programs just because their opacity is all fairly low, but those program pixels are just individual pixels in the texture sheet as well. Uh, they're just hard to see because low transparency. But once you have all of the programs written that you want, you can just download your texture and load that into a resource pack and see what it looks like. So I'm going to do that now and see what that array looks like with the glowing and blinking effects. Alrighty, now that I've updated the resource pack, I can just summon an array. You can see right here. We wait a second. Little blink, and then Set the time to midnight to see the emissive effect on the wings and body. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for this resource pack overview. Um, if you want any support with creating your own textures, there's a link to the Discord in the description. Um, and then I guess one more feature that this has. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm working on a data pack that will use these animated textures. But if somebody doesn't want the animated textures because they're too distracting or too resource intensive, though I don't think they will be for most computers, um, every texture that's made with this pack will have a fallback texture built in. Uh, for the LA, it's just the vanilla LA texture that we edited online. And then for these textures in these custom variants I'm making, can just turn off the effect and you can see that these all have you know boring static fallback textures that can still be you know whatever custom texture you want it just won't have any of the effects um, so I think that's just a nice little feature that's added you can you know update your player skin to have whatever wild shader effects you want without it impacting somebody on a server who doesn't have the resource pack enabled. 
Um, but yeah, that is all for now, and keep an eye out for some information soon about this mutagenic mobs data pack that has been consuming my life for the past couple months. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you all in the future.